King Hamlet of Denmark has died, supposedly of a snake bite he received while he was sleeping in his orchard. Wife marries his brother within weeks. Prince Hamlet, his son, returns from school for the funeral and wedding to discover that his father's ghost has been seen by castle's guards. The ghost is walking on the battlement of the castle. Hamlet approaches the ghost, who tells him that Claudius murdered him by puring poison into his ear as he was sleeping in his orchard. The ghost wants revenge, but wants Prince Helmet to leave his mother out of it because she's innocent. Helmet is upset and afraid to take the word of a ghost in order to commit a sin like murder. After all, a ghost could be the devil in disguise, asking him to commit a mortal sin so he can steal his soul. Hamlet beca becomes par paranoid as his friend betray him by spying on him for Claudius, and his girlfriend obeys her father and avoids Hamlet. He's so upset he couldn't contempt a plays suicide. King Hamlet of Denmark has died, supposedly of a snake bite he received while he was sleeping in his orchard. His wife Gertrude marries his brother Claudius within weeks. Prince Hamlet, his son, returns from school for the funeral and wedding to discover that his father's ghost has been seen by castle guards. The ghost is walking on the battlements of the castle. Hamlet approaches the ghost, who tells him that Claudius murdered him by pouring poison into his ear as he slept in his orchard. The ghost wants revenge, but wants Prince Hamlet to leave his mother out of it because she is innocent. Hamlet is upset and is afraid to take the word of a ghost in order to commit a sin like murder. After all, a ghost could be the devil in disguise asking him to commit a moral sin so he could steal his soul. Hamlet becomes paranoid as his friends Rosencrantz and Guildenstern betray him by spying on him for Claudius, and his girlfriend Ophelia obeys her father and avoids Hamlet. He is so upset, Hamlet contemplates suicide, otherwise known as the to-be-or-not-to-be speech, which is what you are about to see. To be or not to be, that is the question. Whether tis nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune, or to take arms against a sea of troubles, and by opposing end them, to die, to sleep no more, and by a sleep we say end the heartache and the thousand natural shocks that flesh is heir to, tis a consummation. Devoutly to be wished, to die, to sleep, to sleep perchance to dream. I there's the rub, for in that sleep of death what dreams may come. When we have shuffled off this myrtle coil, as give us pause, there's the respect that makes calamity of so long time. For who would bear the whips of scorns of time, the oppressor wrong, the proud man's contumely? The pangs of despised love, the law's delay, the insolence of office and the spurns that patient merit of the unworthy takes, when he himself might his quietus make with bare bodkin, who would fardels bear to grunt and sweat under a weary life, but that the dread of something after death? Undiscovered country from whose born no traveler returns puzzles the will and makes us rather bear those ills we have then fly to others than we know not of. Thus conscience does make cowards of us all. And thus the native hue of resolution is sicklied over with the pale cast of thought, and enterprises of great pith and moment with this regard their currents turn awry and lose the name of action. Soft you now, the fair Ophelia, nymph in thy orisons, be all my sins remembered. Starring Marshall No. Telfer and George Heideck.